Hey, good morning, everybody, or whatever time of day it is that you're listening to this. Uh, so glad that you all uh, joined us today for another edition of Grace to All with Paul Gray. And <clears throat> many of you know the person that you see on the screen with me, or if you're just listening to audio, you'll recognize his voice. I'm so glad to have my friend Steve McVeigh back with me. Hello, Steve. Hi, Paul. Good to be with you today, my friend. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. And uh, uh, we've been uh, <clears throat> on the line for about 20 minutes talking, and there's hardly anything that we've said that we can say live in front of everybody, or we'd, <laughs> we'd ruin both our reputations. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll, I'll just let people uh, uh, ponder about that, but no, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> but I, I want to I tell you, all, you know, I started doing podcasts uh, a little over three years ago. This, this particular episode is number 329, and uh, I've, I've interviewed Steve at different times very early on, and then... <clears throat> Uh, some other times in there. And I really appreciate uh, Steve doing this. I know he's busy and Steve is, is uh, um, he, he was my first real uh, exposure to grace and uh, uh, his ministry is grace walk uh, ministry. Uh, you know, I call mine grace to all grace with Paul Gray. And he so welcomed me uh, back in those early days, starting in 2009, and uh, just reached out to me and accepted me uh, uh, <clears throat> when I didn't know squat about uh, much of anything, uh, let alone about grace. But uh, uh, Steve, just to start out with, thanks so much for uh, mentoring me and so many other people. Well, thank you, Paul. I, you've been one of the gifts in my life. Our friendship has meant a lot to me through the years and still does. Well, it's sure mutual. I, and I thanks for saying that. I want to I want to start out today just by asking you, uh, what are you seeing these days? You know, when we record this is in the spring of uh, 2022. What are you seeing these days in regard to people around the world uh, coming into a, an ever greater understanding of the unconditional love of the Father, grace to all, uh, uh, the finished work of Jesus. Uh, what's different now than you saw 10, 15 years ago? And uh, how, how are you assessing all of this? I've never been more encouraged because I am seeing an <clears throat> openness among people today toward the true gospel that is greater than anything that I have ever seen in my life, not just in the last 10 to 15 years, but if you think about it, you and I, and, and most everybody in our age group that grew up in church, lived in a world where Christendom was very, very much defined by structure more than by substance. It was defined by uh, sectarianism, by denomination, uh, and you had to look and talk and think a certain way to be considered a good Christian. I remember all of my life uh, as a child, we prayed constantly for revival, that God would awaken the church, that we would see revival. And now we've come to a place where in the divine sense of humor that he seems to have, I think that we are finding the thing happen that many have prayed for all of our lives. And that is, there is I'll call it a revival, though that's not a new covenant or even a New Testament word, but for, in a literal sense, we're seeing a resurgence, we're seeing an awakening among Christian people, and oddly enough, the thing that's happening is we're looking back at some of these old antiquated systems, and I don't mean the Church of Jesus Christ, but I mean all the trappings that surround it. We're looking back on some of these antiquated systems, and we're saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean that to be a follower of Jesus Christ and to be a, a devoted child of God, I don't have to check the box of everything that I was told I had to believe and do in church. And so people are breaking out of the religious system and they're for the first time coming out from the behind the walls of religion, they're encountering the true and living God through Jesus Christ. And that's exciting to me. There's an inclusive mindset that I'm seeing sweeping the world that did not exist I, at least I was not, if it did, I, I certainly never saw it until the last few decades. Yeah, me too. What an exciting time it is to live. And uh, you, you've heard me say this before, and many of our listeners have too, but uh, in around 2009 or so, when, when I first started to get a, a little glimpse of what grace was, <clears throat> uh, I, I thought I was the only one. <laughs> and, and then, and then I, I, 
shortly after that, I, I found out about you and I thought, well, there's two of us, uh, <laughs> but there, I was, I was convinced there wasn't anybody else in, in my city of a hundred thousand people or so turned out there was, I just didn't know about them. Uh, and because they'd been kicked out of most every church in town, uh, but, <laughs> but, uh, uh, no, it, it's, uh, th things have changed so much and it's, gosh, it's just so good. And, and being able to connect with people, uh, as, as you do, uh, with, with your platforms, uh, I know that you have people all over the world in different time zones that, uh, some even stay up real late at night to, uh, listen to you in the morning and, uh, at other times. And, uh, it really is a worldwide thing, isn't it? It is. It is. Uh, yeah, it's been exciting to see the ability that we have through the Internet, just like you and I are doing right now. We're able to connect with people all over the globe. And uh, I tell people all the time that in, in the group that I teach online that th what we do online is not virtual. People talk about, you know, virtual groups and virtual relationships you know through the internet they're not, just ask match.com whether uh, the people uh, we've got people in the group i teach who who met and married online i said what we're doing is not virtual it is digital but thankfully in matters of the spirit uh, those things transcend face to face though we all love face to face i prefer it even now but but through this digital medium of the internet it's the world has become a smaller place and we find that we have family all over the globe that we might not have seen face to face, but they're still family nonetheless. Some of my staff on Grace Walk are people that we met through the internet and they were actively involved with us before we ever saw each other oh, really? face to face. Wow, that's cool. I it it just it just came to me. You know, we're talking about grace. We're talking about uh, uh, these changes that we've had, the people that we're seeing all over the world. How would you describe uh, how would you describe someone who's um, who is really coming into the understanding of God's unconditional love and grace and inclusion? <clears throat> how do you now? We're all different, but how do you see it actually affecting people's lives? What's what's different about them now than before? Well. <clears throat> Since 1990, when my own life was first transformed by the understanding of our co-crucifixion with Christ and our identity in Christ, since that time, the word that I have heard used most often to describe this experience of the grace walk is the word rest. And you and I both know that religion is very demanding. Many of us spend our lives uh, on that endless cycle of motivation, condemnation, rededication, and we just move in that loop in church, you know, you're motivated, then you back off and you feel condemned and then you rededicate yourself and you start the process all over again. Many of us live that way for a lot of years. And when we began to understand and, and, and people do understand the finished work of Christ, it's like there's this sigh of relief that we experience individually and collectively when we get with others who know it, to know that it is finished, just like Jesus said. And as my, as my mentor and friend Bill Gillum used to say, mm -hmm. life is not a test, it's a rest. And uh, there, there's a freedom in that. So the, the, the thing that I find happening in people when they begin to understand grace and the unconditional love of God, is first of all, they're relieved from the burden that they have felt to try to perform. Mm -hmm. But then there's a there's another change. It changes not only the way we see God, so that we know now that finally we can relax because He's okay with us. But it also changes the way we see others, because we now are able to accept and receive people where they are and for who they are, with no ulterior motive of trying to change them. We're able to give what we know we have received, which is unconditional love so we this this whole construct of insiders and outsiders dissipates and disappears so that as paul said we don't see anybody after the flesh but we know there's neither <clears throat> uh, male or female or one translation literally says insiders or outsiders and we're able to just accept and love people for where they are 
for who they are, where they are. And finally, not only does this change how we see God and change how we see others, but it changes how we see ourselves. Yeah. Uh, in the world of religion, <clears throat> and I'm a prime example, all of my years growing up, I was so often filled with self-contempt because I didn't live up to the standard that I thought God set for me. Now I know there is no such standard. We're in Jesus Christ and we're defined by him. But in the legalistic world that I lived in, I had a certain standard that I thought I needed to live up to. And the thing about legalism and the law <clears throat> is that the law never says good enough, well done. The law will always demand more, 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 more. But when we come to understand the unconditional love of God and who we are in Christ and what it means to rest in grace, not only does it change our mindset about God and others, but we're able to finally accept ourselves and say, you yeah. know, uh, I'm in process and we're able to love ourselves and, and, and receive ourselves the same way that we know God has received us. And so th those, those are game changers. All of those are life altering. Yeah. They are game changers. And I, gosh, I really appreciate how you stated all that, Steve. The, the, uh, <clears throat> in my <clears throat> religious days, really all I had to offer people was a, uh, <clears throat> a bogus, I, I didn't know then it was bogus, but was a bogus ticket uh, out of hell. That's, that's all I had because... <clears throat> um, offering people you know you can have what i have well what you have is getting up early on sunday morning and going to a weird place and giving most of your money to it and not having any fun anymore uh let, let me see if i want that or not <laughs> but if if we were persuasive enough or caught them at at a right moment in their time <clears throat> then you know maybe maybe we uh had somebody who, who was uh, captive and, and willing to uh, <clears throat> do what we were. <clears throat> but it's, uh, we called it good news, but we really didn't have good news to offer. And, <clears throat> you know, what you just said, we really have that to offer, not only to offer people, <clears throat> but they already have it. We just help them wake up to what they already have. <clears throat> and it is a, uh, it, it's, it's a game changer on multiple levels and uh of course i i think first of all for somebody to to uh <clears throat> be attracted to that they have to be attracted to that they you know they have to see a difference uh, in somebody but <clears throat> but then when they do um it, it's like a magnet uh, i've found that <clears throat> that draws people and you know that's one of the things that um that i'm uh, i'm really hoping to do uh <clears throat> with with my book um grace to all which is you know, the same name as this podcast is to uh a, as you know i've got a couple of pages in it about some 85 uh, people or so that i've interviewed including you and a lot of our mutual friends and my uh, my hope is that when people read that they will see just uh what you said they'll, they'll get a glimpse of people whose lives are now characterized by rest and peace and joy and being able to uh, uh, relax and ha just have that uh, sense of relief of not having to perform anymore, and, uh, and and that they will there will for those who don't yet have that experience that that there there will be uh, something drawing them to connect with you or one of the other people uh, in the book, and then to uh, uh, start hearing more teaching and, and maybe even become involved in, in a group like you have online or in person. And uh, that, that's the driving force with me, as, as it appears to be with you, to uh, uh, not give people a, a, a ticket to get out of hell, uh, but to give, give people real rest and relief and joy right now <laughs> in the here and now. The amazing thing to me, Paul, <clears throat> is that in the evangelical world, the focus tends to be on trying to reach those outside the church with the gospel. But you and I both know that the message of the evangelical world has been largely, largely diluted and polluted to the point where it's not the gospel they share anymore. But the truth is, I think the greatest target audience that we have maybe the people inside the church world. Uh, you know, I, I am all for the church of Jesus Christ, but there are many who sit in church every Sunday that are prisoners of war and they don't even know it. They're the ones who need to hear the gospel because 
they're on that performance-based treadmill and they don't understand that they, along with every other person in that who's alive or ever lived is included in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And uh, there's so many miserable people, so many miserable folks that are professing Christians, but they just don't know the whole story. And so they're, they're not able to rest. And, you know, those of us like you and me and, and the others that, that we know who are sharing this message of truth, as Jesus said, the fields are ripen to harvest. <laughs> and a lot yeah. of times it's, it's the folks in the church world that are ready for it. Some, I think you have to have run on the treadmill long enough to get tired of it before you're open. But more and more, I'm finding people that have spent their lives in church who are saying, you know, there's got to be more to it than this. <clears throat> and they're right. There is more yeah. to it than that. And that's our target. That's my target audience. Uh, yeah, is to reach those who say enough is enough. There's got to be more, and uh, it's exciting to see people waking up to it. Oh it, boy, it it really is. And I, I uh, <clears throat> my friend Keith Giles uh, wrote something a few weeks ago about it, uh, and it uh, in uh, Relevant magazine it had a story about it. He he talked about a a, a uh, Christian uh, 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 music. <clears throat> star leader of a group whatever who uh came out in in public at a uh, show saying we have to declare war on these people who are into deconstruction and uh and when you said prisoners of war and don't know it <clears throat> i it, it 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 just made me uh uh think of that and and any uh you know jesus was not about war <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he was about uh, peace, <clears throat> but um, you know that's <clears throat> got a little off track again there. But well, the, 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 he can say <clears throat> that. That person may say that, but there's also evidence in Scripture where Jesus said that your the it's your traditions, the traditions of men that have basically nullified the grace of God, and so religion is stands in sharp contrast to grace. So, uh, yeah, the, I. I I think there is a lot that needs to be deconstructed, but the truth is when we're confronted with the pure message of God's grace, uh, you don't have to focus on deconstructing because what the spirit does is he floods our understanding with the truth and it just naturally, or should I say supernaturally flushes out all that crap mm. that was put in there. <clears throat> you don't have to have a, a, a deconstruction effort because when you understand the truth, you know, the lies are, it's like turning on the light. The darkness is dispelled by the light. Yeah, that was just the phrase I was going to use. <clears throat> and we get to see that. We get to proclaim that good news and uh, <clears throat> we get to uh, uh, help people come alive and awake to who they already are. <clears throat> and it's certainly not that we've got it all figured out. Gosh, I, <clears throat> I, I still find out every day uh, that God is better than I thought he was yesterday. And I thought he was really good yesterday. <laughs> Steve, we're, we're uh, uh, out of time for, for this episode. We'll, uh, we'll stop the uh, recording in a minute and you and I'll chat and then we'll do another that people will hear a week later. But uh, tell people how they can connect with you, <clears throat> where they can hear your teaching, get your books, uh, uh, connect with the, the different things that you're doing. Well, the, the, the most direct path to, to find out what, who I am and what I'm doing is to just come to my website, stevemcveigh.com. And my name is spelled M-C-V-E-Y. Looks like McV, but, some, but it's stevemcveigh.com. And if they come there, they'll find you know, tabs and <clears throat> links that will point them in the direction for all the other things that I'm, for all the things that I'm doing, I should say. And one of those things is you, every day you teach, uh, 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 in, well, it's seven 30 year time. Is that right? Eight 30 year time. Eastern standard time. Yeah. I teach a live group. We've got several mm -hmm. hundred people in there that I teach every day, five days a week. But even though I'm live, uh, well, I'm not live every day, but I'm live sometimes, sometimes it's pre-recorded, but it's at eight 30 Eastern standard time. But the thing is, uh, we've got folks in that group right now. I think it's nine different countries. Our newest one, Somebody just came on from Hong Kong. My point is we're all in different time zones. So 
even though it, it, they're not able to join me live, the videos are left uh, online and people can watch them at their convenience. And again, at stevemcveigh.com, they can get information on that. Right. And I listen to, to that later in the day, rarely live because of my uh, duties with my grandson. My daughter Jody's in your group and she listens to it uh, uh, at night after she's got uh, her son, our grandson to bed. And uh, uh, the beauty of it is, is we can listen uh, anytime and uh, with an emphasis on quantum spirituality, uh, which is uh, fascinating. That, that's a topic for uh, uh, another time. But uh, Thank you for thank you for being faithful to continue to do that and for uh, making it available to all of us. And thanks for being with us on this edition of Grace to All. It's my pleasure, Paul. Thanks. And thanks to everybody for uh, watching and being with us. Uh, we'll uh, shut things down now and then we'll uh, Steve will be back with me next week. So thanks to you.